Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 6.1. We're given an exponential function, f of x, and the base of the exponent here is 2. In part a, we're asked to graph this function. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a simplified version of this function, just the basic exponential y equals 2 to the x. We'll graph it and then we'll use transformations that we learned back in chapter 1. Now what do we know about the graph of y equals 2 to the x? Well, the base of the exponent here is, or the exponential expression is 2. It's bigger than 1, so it's going to be an increasing exponential. We know that all these basic exponential functions have a y-intercept of 0, 1, and we know that all of them have a horizontal asymptote y equals 0. So increasing 0, 1 and y equals 0 is the basic information. If we want to pin this down to get a more accurate graph, we can always go back to what we learned in chapter 1. We'll just plug in friendly x values and get at least three good points on the graph. So I'm going to pick negative 1, 0, and 1. When I plug negative 1 in, I get 2 to the negative 1 power, which remember that negative flips it over makes it a fraction. I plug 0 in, I get 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. When I plug 1 in, I get 2 to the first power, which is 2. So this gives me some extra points. So I'm up at 0, 1. I go over 1 and then I'm up 2. I go over negative 1 and I'm down at a half. And then I connect these in a pleasing, increasing fashion, like, like so. All right, so let's record the points down here. I've got negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2. I've got a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. All right, so thinking back to section 1.8 and transformations, what do I need to do to this function to build it up to this formula? Okay, well, if you remember, we always did the insides first. Okay. So what's inside an exponential function mean what's up in the exponent? So if I look at what's up in the exponent here, it's negative x plus 1. So I'm going to set negative x plus 1 equal to each of these x values to figure out the new x values. So I have negative x plus 1 is negative 1. Negative x plus 1 is 0 negative x plus 1 is 1. So I'm setting what's inside the exponential function, so what's up in the exponent, equal to each of my original x values. So to solve all of these, the first thing we're going to do is subtract 1 from both sides. So we're subtracting 1 from the old x's. That means we're doing a shift to the left. So I get negative x, or the opposite of x, rather, is negative 2. I get the opposite of x is negative 1. I get the opposite of x is 0. The last thing we're going to do is divide everything by this negative 1. That's multiplying. So dividing the x values by negative 1 is going to give me a reflection across the y-axis. So this gives me x equals 2, x equals 1, x equals 0. All right, so these are the new x values. How do I find the new y values? I take each of these new x values and toss them back into my function f of x. All right, so here's each of my new x values. I'm going to plug them back in to get the new y values. So I plug in x equals 2. It's 5 minus 2 to the negative 2 plus 1. So it's 5 minus 2 to the negative 1. So it's 5 minus 1 half. And so notice this 1 half was the old x value that went along with x equals negative 1. What am I doing to it? I'm multiplying it by a negative, which is going to reflect it across the x-axis. And then I'm adding 5 to it, which is going to move it up 5. All right, so I do 5 minus 1 half. 10 halves minus 1 half is 9 halves. All right, so the old point on the graph 
was negative 1 1 half. That's getting moved to the new point, negative 2, excuse me, 2 comma 9 halves. All right, let's plug in the next new x value, x equals 1. That's 5 minus 2 to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 5 minus 2 to the 0, which is 5 minus 1. 1 was the y value that originally went with the old x value, x equals 0. Multiplying by negative 1, adding 5, gives us a new at y value of 4. So the old point, 0 comma 1, which was our y-intercept, is now getting moved to the point 1 comma 4. All right, so the last of the new x values to substitute in here is x equals 0. And that's, so I get 5 minus 2 to the negative 0 plus 1, which gives me 5 minus 2 to the first power, which gives me 5 minus 2. So once again, this was the original y value that went along with the x value, x equals 1. I'm multiplying it by negative 1 and then adding 5. So this gets me down to 3. And so the old point, 1 comma 2, is getting moved to the new point, 0 comma 3. Okay, so everything that just happened here is the same kind of stuff that happened back in section 1.8, except we're just doing using an exponential function. Now the last thing we want to track through is the old horizontal asymptote. So the old horizontal asymptote was y equals 0. And we didn't bother messing around with this when we were doing the x stuff because everything that happens with the x's inside the exponent isn't going to affect the y values. So now we need to go back and look to see what's happening here at the y values. And so as we mentioned, every time we solve this, uh, this is the third step here. This is where, you know, we're affecting the old y values. Okay, so what happened here? We took 5 minus the old y value. So we took the y value, multiplied it by negative 1, added it to 5. So if I want the new horizontal asymptote, I take the old y value and subtract it from 5, and I'm going to get y equals 5. All right, so now we've got our three new points, and we've got the new horizontal asymptote. We should be all set to graph this function. Okay, so now it's time to put everything together and get the graph of the function. So we'll graph the axes here. So here would be y equal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and x equals 1, 2. We have the point 2 comma 9 halves, we have the point 1 comma 4, and we have the point 0 comma 3. And we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 5. So I put this connect together and I connect the dots as I did before, and we're going to get this And so there's a graph, y equals f of x equals 5 minus 2 to the negative x plus 1. All right, now from this graph, we're supposed to find, in part b, the domain and range. So if I look at this graph, the domain is all real numbers. There's no domain restrictions here. Um, these, can, these continue off infinitely in both directions, so for every x value, eventually I'll have a y value to go with it. What's the range? The range I'm looking at what's going on in the y-axis. This continues down forevermore, so the range will be everything up to, but not including, the y equals 5. So I have an open parenthesis there at the 5. Part C. Explain why the graph is 1 to 1. Well, to check 1 to 1, I look at horizontal lines. And so, since the graph, y equals f of x, passes the horizontal line test, 
meaning every horizontal line I pick is going to hit the graph at most once. F is 1 to 1. If it's 1 to 1, that means I can go ahead and look for the inverse, which is part D.